Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a warm welcome to all attending this Toastmasters International Branding Workshop. I am your Sergeant at Arms, Toastmaster Priscilla Dias. Since this is a district event, I will now read the district mission. We build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. The ground rules will be explained elaborately by the trainer. And so without any further ado, I hand over to the trainer, Area 21 Director, Toastmaster Kajitin. Hello, everyone. In the next two hours, you are going to become Toastmaster brand experts. Sounds too good to be true? If you pay attention closely to what we are going to discuss here today, I can assure you, you will become a Toastmaster brand expert. And with that in mind, let's start our session. A short introduction of myself. My name is Kajitan Barreto, and I'm a Toastmaster, a very passionate one at that. And I'm also a certified trainer, so I love training. And those who were in the WhatsApp group probably know this, that it is not just about this workshop. I just want you all to become brand conscious. And I know that many of you all already are, and some of you are not. And I have different objectives for both of you. My passion is photography and scuba diving, sometimes one and the other. And if I had a choice right now, I would be in the Red Sea under the water. But what to do? We are all stuck at home. And so we must maximize this time to better ourselves, to learn new skills. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to become a better trainer by helping you. I'm also a kettlebell trainer, those who know kettlebells. And I have posted some of my links in the related to my social media accounts. I have a Facebook page called Barreto Photography where I share all kinds of photography, photographs and information. I also have a Instagram account called Dust Tom Kuwait, a very cute name. Why? Because I live in a desert called Kuwait and we have a lot of dust storms. And Q8 is a short form for Kuwait. So cute name there. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel called KGB. I still don't know what I want to do with it, but most likely it will be a training channel. And this event right now is being streamed live on this YouTube channel. Let me cover a few ground rules. As you might have noticed, most of you all are in the mute mode, and that is because I want you all to focus on the branding, on how we can create brand content. As much as possible, use the speaker view of Zoom so that you, whenever I demonstrate something, whenever I go to a website, you will see it clearly. Now, regarding queries, I will explain a little uh, more about it on the next slide. As much as possible, take notes. Take a small notebook and a pen and jot down some of the points that I will be discussing because they will form the foundation of your branding expertise. All of you are at home, but please keep be aware of your surroundings in case of any emergency. I'm sure all of you know how to safely exit. Now I have certain acknowledgements I would like to take care of. First of all, I want to introduce to you Priscilla who will be the chat monitor and quality assurance for this workshop. And I will ask her to explain her role. And let me also mention to you, she's sitting in the next room and she happens to be my wife. She's the uh, president of Kuwait Challengers Toastmasters Club in Kuwait. And she's the incoming Area 21 Director-elect. Priscilla? 
Thank you, trainer Kajetan Barreto. Today, I have two roles. One, the chat monitor, and two, the quality assurance. During the training, you definitely will have some questions. You can raise these questions by sending them to the chat box directly to the chat monitor. That's me. I will monitor the questions and ensure that these are addressed during the Q&A session. I will also be monitoring the YouTube channel for queries from our live audience. As quality assurance, my role is to ensure the trainer is delivering the, the right level of quality in terms of audio and video. With this, over to our trainer, Toastmaster Kajitun. Thank you very much for that introduction. And as she has mentioned, whatever questions you have, you will type them to directly to her. I might not be able to monitor the chat myself. And the next person, the most famous person in this workshop, because you all have used his photo in creating all kinds of posters during the last, I guess, 10 days, our Region 11 director and the past District 20 director, he is very passionate about training himself. He loves to ensure that he enables people to become better human beings in general. It is my pleasure to ask DTM Ali to introduce this workshop. Our District 20 Director, Wafa Salman, our PQD and CGD, if they are here, I, I, do, I didn't filter the chat, and our main trainer, Kajetan. I'm not sure if Werna is here, but I saw her on the poster. It's a pleasure to come here and address all of you. All these days, people have been sending, okay, Werna is here, and I see Kajetan smiling as well. Hello, everybody. All these days, I have been getting posters from people around and asking me for the link to the workshop from a club called Westside Toastmasters or something. And I've been telling them, I've, I'm just the lab rat here being tested upon on branding. So then they understand what's happening. And then I give them the WhatsApp link to join the branding session. Now, um, fellow Toastmasters, lockdown is an opportunity we have been hearing this since the beginning of April, that it's an opportunity to connect. It's an opportunity for Toastmasters to connect with Toastmasters from around the world, go for virtual contests, even virtual councils are happening around the world. In fact, today we have a mock session. This whole weekend is going to be crazy with nearly five districts happening, having their councils and contests. So this is why, Kajitan, I would apologize in advance in case I go in and out of the session. Now, lockdown, we, we know we are connecting with people. We know there are a lot of opportunities, but I have seen few rare Toastmasters taking these opportunities and actually doing something out of this lockdown opportunity. Our trainer, Kajetan, Werner are one of them who explored the branding opportunity to learn branding and help people understand what is branding all about. Now, personally, when I saw some posters coming out in the group, I myself went to Canva. I tried to do something, but trust me, I didn't have the guts to post it <laughs> because we are so busy with serving in another uh, segment that we lost touch with so much of minor details we know about branding. I know about the colors, but I don't know about the codes. If you tell me to apply them today, practically, I'll be a big failure. And I'm happy to accept it. But theoretically, I do tell people about branding. So because I can't invest time, at least this term as region advisor, I told a few of my friends, July 1st, I am going to flex my muscles and get into practicality of branding myself. I thank Kajetan, I thank Verna a lot to give all of us learners and seekers this opportunity 
to apply branding guidelines. And this is that unique workshop, which I was waiting for a very long time. This man, Kajetan, is a miracle man. I have given to him a few ideas, a few projects in the past, and the guy just comes up with unique ideas and makes them diamond and presents it to all of us. So thank you, Kajetan, for doing all this today. And, and looking, I'm looking forward for listening to Verna as well. Thank you, Kajetan. Thank you, Verna. Won't take much of your time. Over to you. Thank you very much. The next person is our District 20 Director. Unfortunately, she's uh, not yet in the room. She's trying her best to join us. And if she joins, I will give a few moments because she's also been an inspiration to me. She's a certified trainer and she's the one who certified me as a trainer. And I look up to her and the, we will see because right now she's not there, but let's move on till she comes. Now, what are the objectives? Any training should have an objective. And I have very simple objectives for this training and which is to focus on branding. As Ditya Mali said, we all know that there is a blue color, there is a yellow color, but we, do we know specifically what are those colors? So if we know the basics, then the designing part really is very simple. So if you can see in my learning objectives, I have five things which I want to focus on. Four of them relate to branding which is the colors, the logo, the fonts, and the images. Once we have this, this toolbox, then Canva or PowerPoint or any software for that matter becomes a second nature. You can just create whatever you want because you know what is your toolkit. Now, before we start, I just want to have a sense of what kind of people are there in the workshop in terms of your branding awareness. So I will run a short poll and I would like to share with you all your familiarity with branding guidelines. So the poll is on your screen. Please uh, select the right option. What you think is your awareness level of the branding? And I'm getting a good response. And let's share the results. So as you can see, many of you have chosen, I don't know anything about branding. I know a little bit about branding and that is really the focus of my workshop today because I'm going to do it slowly, easily for you to follow. There are some people who are proficient and I know there are some experts also in this workshop and you all have a different objective of what you will get out of this workshop because you all also need to do some need to get something out of the two hours that you're investing with us here. And what are those outcomes? I have two learning outcomes for you. For those people who have selected, I don't know anything about branding. I know a little bit about branding. I want you all after this workshop to start creating content that is brand compliant. But for those of you who already know branding, use this experience, the way that I have set up the training, the preparation work, the engagement with the attendees and start creating your own workshop because I'm telling you, the best way to learn something is to train others. And branding is one of the areas which seem to have the least amount of uh, exposure. People are told, do PR work. Just go to Canva, create something. This is the theme. And people go and start creating whatever comes to their mind, and then they try to find out what is wrong with it. And that is actually what I'm going to simplify. Rather than going to some software and start creating based on some ideas that you have, but no idea of the branding guideline, and then somebody says, hey, this is not as per the branding guideline. And then you try to figure out what is not as per the branding guideline. Instead of that, Let's spend some time to understand our toolbox. What is it that we can do in, uh, in Toastmaster branding? And then 
you will find that designing becomes a very simple task. So I'll switch now to my training view, but before I do that, again, one more short poll, because I'm going to now focus on colors. The first part of our branding, which is the colors. So I want you all to tell me which of these five colors is not a Toastmaster brand color. What do you think is not a Toastmaster brand color? And I have choices of gray, yellow, blue, maroon, and green. And even those who have not, who don't know anything about branding guidelines, I am sure you have seen enough posters on Toastmasters to kind of decide which is not a brand color. And I'm so happy to see the responses that have been submitted. And I'll share the results with you. Yes. Green is not one of the Toastmaster brand colors, and almost all of you have got the answer right. And so that means we are on the right track. So let's move to colors. And what are the branding colors that we can use in Toastmaster content? So let me switch to my training view. And let me change this camera a little bit smaller because uh, I'm sure you all want to focus on the content and not on me, but I still want you all to see me. Try to make your screen maximized so you can see what I'm going to talk about. The colors is the brand palette of Toastmasters. Now in normally, in a color system, we have millions of colors, almost 16 million colors can be created. But in Toastmasters, we deal with just five colors. And whenever you want to look at what colors can we use, what are these colors? You will normally come to toastmasters.org. This is the website which I'm sure is familiar to all of you who are in Toastmasters because you come to this site for information to complete your pathways. But as brand content creators, our focus is on this section called the resources, where all the content that we can use to create material that is compliant with Toastmasters branding is available here. And more specifically, I'm interested in this brand portal because that's like our portal. That's like our home where we should go to find whatever we want. So when we come to the brand portal, we have different categories that have different kinds of information and resources. Let's start with the brand manual because that's where, that's like our Bible for creating brand content. And as you can see, we have three manuals and they all have the similar content. You will choose one depending on what is it that you want to do. The main manual is called the brand manual and the visual brand guidelines, which is what I will open now, is like... You have, a, no, you may have yes. to zoom in this slide. It cannot be seen clearly. Is this okay? Yes. Okay, so the visual brand guidelines not only tells you what is the branding, but how it should look visually. So it gives you a visual uh, representation of the branding. So let me go to the visual brand guidelines. And we start with the colors. Even Toastmaster starts with the colors. And you can see that the branding has five colors, gray, yellow, blue, navy blue, you may call it the maroon and the red. So five colors. And by default, in any color system, there are two colors that you get, which is the black and white. So if you consider all of them, in essence, you have seven colors only when you are creating your brand content. Five of them, the main colors of the palette, the brand palette, and the black and white. Okay? And the, these colors are not just 
colors. They have specific codes. So if you look at yellow, you can see there is a code there called F2DF74. And what does it mean? It means it's the shade that Toastmasters has chosen to represent yellow because yellow, there can be hundreds of colors, but this is the color we should use. Normally what happens is, let's say you are going to Canva and let me do that. Let me go to www.canva.com. That's the website we all have started using to create content. And let's say I choose this option to create a design. And let's say I'm creating an Instagram post. So you can see the white palette here. It's all back is white. And let's say I want to use the yellow as my background because I know Toastmasters yellow color. So when I click on this, I get this small thing that you see here, which is the color wheel. When I click on that, you may say that, okay, I'll choose yellow, which is something like this. And you may be right, that's a yellow color, but that's not Toastmaster yellow color. So how do we make sure that when I'm choosing yellow, I'm choosing the exact yellow? And that comes to going back to our Toastmaster visual brand guidelines, the code. F2 DF74. And these are the five numbers, eight, nine, B2, B1, for yellow, F2, DF74. So these five codes, if you can write them on a piece of paper, and in fact, if you, if what I normally do is, I keep all the five colors on a piece of paper next to my computer, which means anytime I want to refer, I can just look at that particular code and enter it. So let's look at that yellow, F2DF74. That's the code I should be using. So if I was to copy this in using my right click button, I can say copy. Now, if I go to Canva, and this is where I'm going to set the color, I go back to my color wheel here. Now, instead of choosing Instead of choosing the colors from the list here, I will type the code F2DF74 because that's the code I had with me. When I type that code, I get this exact yellow and you see the shade has changed. So that is the yellow color you should be using. Similarly, if I wanted my background to be maroon, I don't just choose any color. I will go to my visual brand guidelines and again, this is where if I had a piece of paper, it would be so much easier, right? I would just go to the color 772432. That's the color I want. Copy it by right click and say copy. Now, when I go to Canva and I come here and I click this and I choose the background color by choosing this button here. So I can type it. 772432, click, I have a Toastmaster brand color. And this goes for any shape that you create here. For example, if you look at the left hand side, I have all the shapes that I can put. So let's say I want to put a triangle shape in my poster. I put it here. That's a triangle. And let's say I want this triangle to be let's say gray color gray is again i will not go to the visual brand guidelines now i'll just refer to my paper which i have with me which says if i click here and i click again on the color button here i can type that note code a9 b2 b1 and i have that exact brand color of toastmasters on my uh, poster and I can move it around however I want if I want it something like this great I have some nice design already so you see you have to only deal with five colors when creating content and of course the black and white now the black and white also has a code by the way if you want to be very precise if I want this circle here 
I will drag it into my poster. Let's say I want to resize it by using this handle like this, make it small. And let's say I want this circle to be white, absolutely white. So I again click on this color button and the color for white is actually F, 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 six times. And that's the pure white. Similarly, if I had to take another shape, another circle, let's say, and make it smaller, and I wanted this to be black, then the color for that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Black, absolute, okay? It means it's an absence of color. Zero means, and if you, if I were to go to you, to the visual brand guidelines, this codes that I have just explained also have what we call a equivalent in RGB system that is red, green, blue. And as you know, while growing up, we used to always mix colors to make different colors. So what this means is if I was to read this code, it means I have mixed 242 of red, 223 of green, and 116 of blue. If I mix this in this proportion, then I get this color, which is F2, DF74. They're all the same. If you were doing into publishing and printing, the same color has a system called Pantone system, which is used for publishing and printing. They use a code called Pantone 127, which means the same color. There, is, there could be a slight variation in the shade, but that means it is this code, okay? Also, if you are printing, you know, printing is, is different from, uh, from the mobile or on the screen, what you see. Printing uses a different mixture of colors. That's why when you buy your ink cartridges from the sh shops, you don't buy red, green, and blue cartridges. You buy cyan, which is C, magenta, which is M, Y, which is yellow, and K, which is black. So this is the colors that are used for printing purpose. And RGB are the colors used for your television or your first screen, for your phones. And they all have this, they can be converted from one to the other. For the sake of simplicity, we use hex codes because we just have to remember six digits, F2, DF74, instead of saying R242, G23, and so forth. So we rely, uh, we find hex codes to be the easiest way. And what I have done is, and I will put it in the group, uh, WhatsApp group later on, I have created a cheat sheet for you all to use So this is a cheat sheet that I have created showing you the seven colors that are there in the Toastmaster brand palette. And I am planning to, when I get the time, I'm going to print them something like this, like a business card. So whenever I go to any club, basically I will hand over a card to, or two to the members saying, hey, you want to be brand compliant? Here's a card for you. Just use this and your life will be so much easier. You don't have to go searching around for colors. You don't have to go to the bra visual brand guidelines to find out what color to use. Just rely on this card. All the colors that you need are here. So colors, very simple, five basic colors plus black and white, total seven, clear. Codes are given to you. You can find them in the visual brand guidelines. I will share them with you. Just make a note of it or keep it on a piece of paper. That's the easiest thing to do. And you are done. Colors are done. That's all there is to it in the branding as far as colors are concerned. So let's run a small poll to see what's the outcome of the training of colors? So 
So how many colors are there in the TI brand palette excluding white and black? Amazing, it means you all were paying attention and that makes me happy. So there are five colors. Again, they are gray, yellow, blue, maroon, and red. And the codes, those are the only hex codes that you need to note down and you're good to go. And of course there is black and white, which is part of our color system, whether we like it or not, because without black and white, we can't have a color system. Let's move to the next important element of our branding, which is the logo. And before I start again, let's have a small session understanding something about logos. So I have a question for you, and please answer it. Whether Toastmaster clubs can design their own logos to pro promote Toastmaster activities. I'm very happy with the responses that I'm getting. So as you can see, most of you are aware that clubs cannot create their own logos. In fact, Toastmasters or any organization for that matter wants to protect their brand. So when you place Toastmaster logo on a material, you should not mix it up with any other logos on the same material because then you are giving conflicting messages. And I always have this question asked, what if it's a corporate club? Why can't I put a corporate uh, logo? You are actually giving conflicting messages because when you put a Toastmaster logo, you are conveying a certain emotions, a certain message so please, whenever you put a designing something, whether it's a poster or publicity material, the moment you put a Toastmaster logo, avoid putting any other logo on that material. So let's move to the logo component of our visual brand guidelines. And again, it's in the same order. Toastmasters wants us to focus in the same way. Focus on the colors first, get your colors right, then go to the logo and uh, let's look at the logo. I'm just looking at my time just to make sure that I don't overshoot. Logo is the element or the integral part of any branding. So for Toastmasters, this is our logo. This is where we have to go and get it. And one more thing I would like to highlight before I move direct, um, before we move ahead, because this is a visual brand guidelines, what is the important thing you must uh, look at when you're looking at this document is that the system not only tells you what is it, like. It doesn't, it just doesn't tell you these are the five colors, but how to use them. So for example, notice something very interesting. When the content is written on a light background, which is the gray, the yellow, we are using a black color to write on it so that it can contrast against the background. But when we are writing on the darker colors, which is a blue, maroon and red, we are writing in white, again, to have that contrast for reading. But when you are writing on white, which is also brand color, right? Notice that we can use any of the brand colors to write. So as much as possible, when you are writing on the white, you could use the blue, the maroon, the even the gray, the red, all are available to you. Right? So that's how you should look at it. When you are writing on, the, on top of the lighter colors as much as possible, use red, uh, use black. You, you can use others, but the best contrast is black. When you're writing on the darker colors, 
the best contrast is white. And when you're writing on white, you have all the five colors for you to use when writing on white. That's how it should be. Now the logo, as I said, has certain requirements. First of all, you have different versions of the logo. You have the full color, you have black and white, you have grayscale. And where do you find all these logos? The best place, always, whenever you want the best, uh, the highest resolution logo, again, is go to toastmasters.org, go to our resources section, go to the brand portal, and you will find logo and design elements. This is where you can download all the highest quality logos and other design elements that you can use in your content creation. So what are the design elements other than the logo? Let's start with the logo first. And I want you to focus, let's start with the color logo. Now we can see that there are three files here, JPG, PNG, and EPS. They all have the same thing. If you click on the JPG, you'll get the logo. You, get, you click on PNG, also you'll get the logo. So what's the difference? The difference is that if you download the PNG file and EPS files, these are transparent files. That means when you take the logo and we will see the difference between both of these files right now. So as far as possible, when you're working in Canva or any software for that matter, try to get the PNG version because that is transparent. And let us first download both these files and see what's the difference between JPG and PNG. And then you'll see why we should use PNG. EPS is normally used if you are into publishing and you're using uh, software like Illustrator or some high-end software. But for most purposes, for our consumer purposes, PNG is fine. So let me first look at the JPG file. I click on it. It will open the file for me. And I can right click anywhere. I can say save image as. And I will save the image. Let's say I'll save it on my desktop. And I'll say color logo. Okay. JPG. And save it. That's it. I have the file on my computer. A very high resolution logo. Then let me look at the PNG file. I click on PNG. Same, it looks like it has a black background, but you will see it is not. I'll again right click anywhere and I'll say save image. Again, I'll put it on my desktop and it says it's a Toastmaster logo PNG. So there are two files now on my computer. Let's go to Canva and see how these two logos look. So I have this design that I've been creating. Let me move this out of the way. And let me bring these two files into Canva. And it's very simple. I go here under the upload section. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you all. I can. And uh, so when I click upload, I have this button which says upload an image or video. So I will click on it and I will go to my desktop and I can see there are two files here. There is a color logo, which is the JPG, the first one which I uploaded. Let me open that first. And it comes here. Let me upload the other one also, the PNG file, which is here. So I have two logos. One is the JPG and one is the PNG. What's the difference? Let's check it. When I take the JPG file, you can see that the white background is always there. Okay. But if I take the PNG file and I drop it on my poster, I can see it has a transparent background. So whatever color I choose, okay, if I make this background now blue, which I know is 004165 from that list that we had, and I change it, you see, the color logo automatically matches with the background, the PNG file. But in the JPG, it will remain white throughout. 
So it's your creative choice. Do you want this or this? I love PNG because I can place it in any color, any background, and it just blends in so beautifully. So for me, PNG is the way to go. And I don't even look at JPG at all. Now, so that takes care of the logo and you can choose black and white logos. They have a gray scale, they have blue, burgundy. So you can choose whatever color that is your creative choice. You can go and choose that color. Now there are certain guidelines of using the logo and let's just quickly review those guidelines before we move forward. So these are the various logos that you could download from the resources section that I just showed you. This is the most important part which always bothers me is the space around the logo. We have clear requirements that when you place the logo, you must give the logo breathing space. And the breathing space actually is mathematically calculated. If you look at the size of this line, it is actually the square of that, you see? And the same size should be on top of the logo on all sides. So let's go back to our design and we look at this logo. And we see that I want to write something on, on this. So I'm going to go to the text option and let me put some text here. How close can I put the text? Can I put it here? Can I put something on top of the logo? No, you can't do that. Can you put it, let's say, here? No, because the space is, is, is not maintained. Can you keep it, let's say, here? Again, no, there must be enough space. As I said, if you look at this line, we need like about this much space all around when we are placing the logo. So make enough space around the logo. Don't put anything else. Don't draw lines uh, or keep it so close like this. Give space. And what's the smallest size that you can place the logo? There is a restriction on that also. You can't make a small logo like this, not allowed. The minimum is 72 pixels you can see this is fine actually because it is actually 95 something like that yeah so you can see the numbers as you go up what is the size of the logo so there is a minimum size that you can put a toastmaster logo and if i go back to my branding guidelines it will show me here 72 pixels or three fourth inch of an actual size. That's the minimum you can print the logo. You can't go any smaller than that. So this actually is the actual size as far as Toastmasters is concerned, 72 pixels and breathing space. What other requirements do we have? Let's quickly go down. Some of the guidelines are available here where you should not tamper with the logo you should not squish the logo like this or tilt the logo. And I'm amazed to see people do this uh, thinking it's okay, you know, but all of these guidelines, don't tilt it, don't stretch it, don't squash it, don't put other elements in the logo. Keep the logo as is and don't change the background. So these are the guidelines that you need to follow. Don't put your own district, uh, for example, code on top of it. It has to stay as it is. Even the slogan, which is from Toastmasters, which says where leaders are made, you cannot place it on top of the logo. It has to have its own place. Okay. So that's about the logo. Use it as it is, go to the resources section of Toastmasters, download it, use it, but don't make any modifications to it and give enough breathing space. Let me close this. The other elements that you can use are the word marks. For example, you must have seen this, Toastmaster International. You can use this word mark on its own. 
and you can download it and use it as it is. Okay. And uh, then we have lockups. What are lockups? Lockups is a logo with specific elements. For example, I have a lockup which says Toastmasters with the website toastmasters.org. You can use this element as it is. Or you have a tagline which is where leaders are made. And ideally, ideally, whenever you are using this taglines, try to use directly from the website. Don't create your own uh, text which says where leaders are made. Go to the website, download the com components that you use, use the resources. They are meant to be used as they are. Okay. So these are the various elements that you can use. We have some uh, call outs also. Call outs are triangles of specific type that you can use to bring or attention to specific items within your poster, for example. So you can use this call out. They are very high resolution. Feel free to use them. And in fact, if you go to the visual brand guidelines, it tells you how you can use them. Like to highlight certain part of it, you can download the call out and you can use them in your poster like this to say this is a call out and then you're calling out Jane Doe. So you're highlighting that in this poster, Jane Doe is what you want to stress on. Okay. So these are the various elements related to logo, which are again all available in the resources section. Feel free to use them as they are. Let me go and check my timings. Fine. Now, now that we understood where is the logo, how to place the logo on a poster that we have downloaded, we are good to go. Let's have a small interactive session to understand that you have understood logos. So let me put up another poll. So if you want a logo that has a tra transparent background, would you use the PNG file or the JPG file? I'm very happy. Everything is going as per plan. You all are on the way to becoming Toastmaster brand experts. Okay, so most of you, more than 90% have told me that if you want the transparent background logo, go and get the PNG files. Absolutely amazing. We move to the next very important component and maybe the most controversial part of the branding guidelines is the fonts. And before I do that, again, let's understand your assessment of your idea of Toastmaster fonts. Who knows what are the fonts available for you to use? Right, so what's the, okay. Does any of this font sounds familiar to you? Only one of them is a branded font. I'm very happy with the responses and uh, first of all, let me apologize for putting Smedley Sans Serif there. That was just a trick question because there is no font called Smedley as far as I know, but I thought you all will get uh, tricked into it because Smedley, Ralph Smedley, there must be a font approved by Toastmasters. No, there is no such font. The Myriad Pro is one of the approved fonts of Toastmasters. And we'll come to that now. So it, and the reason why I see such uh, different responses is because not many people pay attention to fonts. Okay, and let's see what are the fonts that we can use 
And if we can't use this font, what are the options available to us? So let's dive into it. Again, I will go to my branding guidelines and make sure that you can see it. And they call it typography, but we are talking about fonts here. So Toastmasters has declared, or at least from their branding, four fonts that they approve to be used for any content that you create. You and may what have are those to fonts? zoom in. Hello. You may have yeah. to zoom in. Yeah, I'm doing that. A uh, little less. Okay, that's better. So there are four fonts. And what are they? They are Gotham, ITC Lubelin, Myriad Pro, which many of you all uh, selected right now, and Arial. But Arial is not really a font of the, of the brand. It just says, because when you can't use Myriad Pro, use Arial as an alternative. Because Arial is a very common font in Microsoft Word or any Windows software or any Apple base, I guess. You find Arial as a font which is freely available. So they say, okay, it looks very close to Myriad Pro. So you can use it. Okay, so it's more of a, a optional font. But the three fonts that we can use are Gotham, ITC Lubelin, and Myriad Pro. And where can we use them? Again, that's you cannot just use them for the... So the primary typeface is Gotham for headlines and subheadings. So when you want to create the top heading, let's say... Challenges Toastmasters Club, that's your heading, right? You can use Gotham for that. When you want to highlight something, which is your uh, taglines or callouts, so secondary typeface should be the ITC Lubelin. This is what we call a serif font, and I'll explain what serif fonts are. But your main font, where you type all the text, all the details, should be Myriad Pro. And if you don't have Myriad Pro, you can use Arial as your safety, as an option. So these are the four fonts you have to choose. So whenever you go to any software, you have to see whether you can have these fonts or no. The problem we will find is when we come to a software like uh, Canva, and let me go there, and let's say I want to type something. Let's say I want to type this quiz challenges. And I know I should type this in Gotham font. Now, if I choose this option, which allows me to choose the font, it currently says it's a font called OpenSA. And I want to use Gotham. Can I find Gotham there? I can see that there is no font called Gotham. And that becomes the first challenge in creating Toastmaster brand content, especially in a software like, uh, uh, free software like Canva. What do we do? Okay, so that's the first thing we need to take care that the fonts that are listed here are maybe not available to you in the software where you're creating your posters or your other content. Even if we go to, let's say, Microsoft Word, you will not find Gotham. You will not find Myriad Pro because these fonts are, first of all, not free. They, you don't get them along with your operating system. You have to buy them. If you really want the right font, you have to pay for it. And sometimes, like take, for example, Myriad Pro. In fact, Myriad Pro is... Uh, if I ask the question, is Myriad Pro free? I'll ask this question to Google. And the answer is, no. The answer is, Myriad Pro is not free. It's a, it's a very expensive font from uh, Adobe. So what happens then? How do we then use the right fonts and still create Toastmaster brand compliant content? So the answer is, you really can't at least with the free version of Canva, you can never say, I have created 100% brand compliant content. Maybe we will reach 90% by using alternative fonts. And this is what we will discuss, how we can use the right alternative font for those four fonts provided by Toastmasters. 
In fact, the font Myriad Pro can be as expensive as I think $900 or something like that. If you just want to buy the font, $900, who can afford it, right? Uh, in fact, Toastmasters, those who are uh, district PR managers here, uh, probably they have access to it because uh, Toastmasters explicitly gives one copy of the Myriad Pro font to the district and every year, the new incoming PR manager is supposed to get a copy of that font for him to use or her to use. Okay, so I'm, I hope you all are doing that. But coming back to this, we have four fonts, Gotham, Lubelin, Myriad Pro and Arial. Okay, so of this four fonts, the Lubelin font is something we call the serif font. And if you, if I make it even bigger, you will find at the end of each letter this accents, right? S, there is a small accent there. This is called serif font, okay? And if you look at Gotham, there is no accents at the end of each letter. Those are called sans serif fonts. So Gotham is a sans serif font, Myriad Pro is a sans serif font, and Arial is a sans serif font, okay? Which means we need to find alternatives to this. So when I want to do a heading, I should use a sans serif font which looks similar to Gotham, okay, but which doesn't have the accents. When I want to have subheadings, I should use something which looks close to Lebelin, which is a serif font. And the main body of your text should be a sans serif font because the idea behind sans serif font, they're easier to read. The serif font look classy, but they're a little harder to read. Maybe on a print paper, it's fine, but on a screen, a sans serif font is considered more modern, more easier to read. So what are the alternatives? As you can see, for Gotham, Toastmasters says you can use an alternative called Montserrat. And if we go to we go to Canva and we search for Montserrat, voila, we have this font, right? So we can use this font, which is Montserrat. Let me change the font to the standard one, which initially was there called Open Sun Serif. Open Sun. Now, hmm. You need to zoom in a little. Yes, uh, this should be enough. Now the other side when you are typing in. Ah, okay, the... that is difficult to zoom, but I will just show you this font, which is Montserrat, which is approved by Toastmasters. And this is a free uh, part of the font, which is available in, uh, also a sans serif font available in uh, uh, Canva. Can we really see the difference here between these two fonts? Really, if I think much, the G looks different, I can see, okay. Uh, there is some difference in, uh, other than that, yeah, they, they pretty much look the same, which means... Can you, excuse me, yeah. can you type the font, instead of typing Kuwait Challengers Club, can you type the font name uh, ah, so that it is the, visible? Yes. So this is now Montserrat, and this is Open Sans, right? Took almost the same, correct? So in my opinion, you could use either one of this font when you are creating the content, as long as they look close to the original font. And the same thing you'll apply for, for example, uh, ITC Lubelin, which is a serif font, and which is uh, next one, which is ITC Lubelin. Try to find a font that looks like this. And if you're, those who are using Windows, I would say this is Times New Roman equivalent, okay? But on, in Canva, I have a font which is called, let me make a copy of this. 
and I have a font here which is let me see. Times new. Times new. So this is again as close to ITC Lubelin that you can get for your subheadings. Okay. So you can use these fonts, and similarly for Myriad Pro, try to find a font that is close to that, and you are good to go as far as Canva is concerned. Okay, so these are the fonts that we can use. And uh, before I move out from the fonts, I want to Myriad Pro again, something similar. And I have created for you one, uh, one interesting uh, the same card that I was talking about that we can give to our club members whenever we go and visit them. So uh, if you were to, I have created like a card. So the one side of the card has all the seven colors. The other side I have listed the, the four fonts of Toastmasters and what could be the equivalent fonts that I believe you can safely use and not get any problems, right? So Gotham, Montserrat, ITC Lublin, you have Pretty or Times New Roman, which I just showed you. Myriad Pro, you could use Open Sans or you can use a beautiful font. I love this font called Lato. It is by it is created by Google, uh, not Google, but Google uh, licenses it, and it's it's a free font, beautiful font. Everything looks so beautiful when you type it in Lato. Try to use that font and you'll thank me for it. So these are the font equivalents. And you're done as far as fonts are concerned. So we know now the colors, five colors plus black and white. We know the uh, logos, where to get the transparent logo and how to use them. We know the fonts. We are almost there. Let's have a small Poll again. How many fonts are there available to you to create Toastmaster branded material? Pure Toastmaster brand material. Absolutely brilliant. So we have four fonts. Again, I'll reiterate, Gotham is your primary font. If you can't use that, use Montserrat or something similar to that. You have a ITC Lubelin, use Times New Roman or something close to that. Myriad Pro is the main body font. I would go for Lato, but you can go for Open Sans in Canva or something similar in Word or PowerPoint. And finally, we have Arial, which is like the safe font which you can use instead of uh, if you don't have myriad pro and you have arial with you you could use arial as a replacement font so four fonts that leaves us with the final thing which is the images what kind of images can you use in your content and for that i want to go to not the visual brand guidelines i want to go to the brand manual so let's go here, resources, brand portal, and open the big boy, which is the brand manual, which has everything in it. It has everything which is there in the visual brand guidelines, by the way, but it has more. And it starts similarly. All the content is, uh, it's a bigger, more detailed uh, version of the branding. But what I want to do is I want to go to the images. And let me 
make it big so that you all can see. What kind of images can you put on your Toastmaster? Can you put cartoons? I've seen a lot of posters with cartoons and uh, something not related to people at all. But if you really want to convey what Toastmasters is all about, then the recommendations always are that you should use images that are in a club meeting, like presentations and speakers, networking, showing people who are engaged. They look engaged. They're always engaged. That's the con message that we want to convey along with a brand. The people are approachable. They're not aloof. You don't, you don't say something like this because that is not what we are trying to convey. And they're empowered. So try to use in images from your club meetings which convey this feelings of engagement, approachability, and empowerment. And from your clubs, from your speech contests, from your trainings, those are the images we should use in your Toastmaster promotion material. And I want to show you something which I usually see in Toastmaster content. Okay, I, it will say, um, so you will find people posting, for example, something like uh, this. All right, where you are trying to say, are you afraid of public speaking? Are you, uh, for example, I see commonly. Uh, fear of public speaking. Okay, we try to tell people something like this. We'll put make a poster saying, "Are you afraid of public speaking? Join our club, and we will make you uh, the best speaker possible in the world." For example, but the idea is, it's not about that. It's what you are conveying because people don't have time to read. People see things first, so when you sort of convey this kind of message next to the Toastmaster brand, you are essentially linking the brand with fear. Okay, so the idea here is to be positive. So you have to find images that are positive, that show you're empowered, show you're engaged, and seek those images in your posters. Now, where will you get some images, such images? Go back to Toastmasters, go back to resources, and go to your brand portal because whatever you need, most of the content is here. And you can see here, you are given free usage of professional images. Why not use them? Images plenty. Yeah, fine. Let's see how many images are there. So click here for access. So as you can see, we have a collection of images. I keep going through them. And I can see I have quite a lot of images, hundreds maybe. Uh, yeah. So if I click on this, let's say this selection, 15 files are there. All these are high resolution images. I can click on any one of them. For example, I've, I like this image. I can click this button at the bottom here and I can download the image. <coughs> I can download the high resolution image or I can download smaller sizes depending on my need because I might not need such a big file. So let me say I want a medium size file and I can download it and I have this image to use for free in my material all the images that are available on Toastmaster website. It's taking some time to download it. Yeah, it's downloaded now. 
And let me just put it on the desktop so I can show you how I can use this image in Canva. So let me go back to my poster that I was creating here. And again, I'll go to uploads and upload an image. This time I'll upload this image that I have just downloaded from the Toastmaster website. It's come here and it's just a matter of dragging and dropping it here and resizing it the way you want and your poster is getting ready. Can you show the upload again? Yes. So on the left that, hand side... That part have... is not clear. You may have yeah. to zoom in that side. I'm trying to see how I can do that. Uh, okay. Uh, might not be able to show it. Uh, unless I let me remove yourself from the screen. Yeah. If you can remove yourself, then we can see that part here. Yeah. Okay, you can see it now. Yes. Okay, so uploads. When you click on the upload, you get this option here called upload an image or video. When I click on that, you can go to anywhere on your computer that you have and select the image and it will click open here and it will come into the section where you can just click on it, drag it and drop it into your poster. Okay, so that's how we put images. But there's a very beautiful way of uh, using images in Canva. And that is this more option that you can see here. Canva has integration to a lot of things. If you have a Facebook account, if you have an uh, Instagram account, you can link directly Canva to your account. And I have done that just to give you an idea. So what I have done is I have linked, in this case, Facebook. And when I click on Facebook, actually it brings all the images from my Facebook feed where I can drop it directly into Canva. Similarly, if I, I have, let's say, Instagram, I post a lot of my photos on Instagram. So if I click Instagram, it will, of course, first time ask you what is your username and password of Instagram. And you can see all my photos that I have posted on Instagram. And I was telling you, right, I'm a scuba diver and I like to showcase my encounter with a whale shark few months ago. Of course, it's not Toastmaster brand compliant. I can't use it in the Toastmaster poster, but I just wanted to show off me under the water. So all the content that you have. So if you had, for example, an Instagram, uh, your club Instagram account, where you post all your meeting photos, then what you could do is you could link your Instagram here. So anytime you want any of your Instagram photos, just click Instagram. All the photos will appear here just drag and drop them onto the canvas and you're good to go. Just make sure that the pictures are looking engaging, they are of people and they are looking empowered. That's, that's the guideline. And what are the images we can't use? Okay, let's check some of the don'ts of uh, the branding. And I want you to focus on that, that please never use animals in your posters landscapes should not be used no children food and appliances including toast and toasters in fact recently i somebody sent me a photo and said is this and it was a, of an actual club meeting and the meeting was i think toast or something like that and the photo was of a toast and i, I said no you can't it's very clearly mentioned you can't use toast medicines cartoons, architecture. Generally, anything which is not people is something you need to avoid. Of course, there are exceptions. For example, if you have a festival, like uh, we have now recently Eid, obviously we can create an exception for Eid because we are not promoting Toastmaster at that time. We are celebrating. So that's a different thing. But when you're promoting your event or a meeting, obviously you will not put the same message, correct? You will show a message of come, get empowered, get engaged, get uh, uh, 
uh, positive. That's the image you will convey when you want people to come to your event. Okay, so that's the images which you should not use. Uh, I have 15 minutes before I hand over to Vena to talk more about the about the this thing. So before I throw open the floor for Q and A, I just wanted to make sure that where is my elements uploads. I want to put my logo back here. So we have some semblance of. Uh, and one more nice thing that we can do in Canva is uh, when you create content like this, one text box, another text box, and the third text box, you can group them together. So what we can do is we can select all these three text boxes like this, and we have this option called group. Once you group it, the whole thing becomes like one element. You can move it around with a single click, and that's very good. And if you like, let's say this and the logo together. You can group that also together. You can group all of them together. First, let me ungroup this. And uh, yeah, I can group all of this. So it becomes like one element, very easy to move around and, and uh, put it in the right place. The other thing I just want to highlight to you is about positioning. So when you have two shapes on your canvas like this, obviously only one shape will appear in front. So if I wanted the white to be in front, then I would then use this option called position and I'll say bring it forward. And because I have highlighted white box, when I click forward, that will come forward. So whenever you have multiple objects like this, you can bring them forward, bring them backwards by using the, so if I, for example, have something like this. And I want to make sure that this gray line comes through. It comes in front. So I will click on that box. I'll say position, bring it forward. And you have this shape like this. Okay. The other thing I wanted to highlight to you is when you type some, uh, or when you create multiple objects, like let's say I type something here and I type two or three things. And they don't look aligned, you know, they are looking a bit off. One is, and let's say this is Closed it by mistake. Let me open it again. Yeah, workshop on. Let's see. So I want to align all of these three objects together. So what I can do is I can select all of them like this and I can position and you can use this options, let's say left align. So all of them come aligned in one side. Okay, this is actually, so this is how we can align content. You can move things forward and backwards and you can use different elements from your uh, Canva. Now, as I said, I'm not going to go too deep into Canva because Canva is basically, you can play around with it. You can bring anything and most of the things that are available in Canva are not actually brand compliant. So for example, I can't use stuff like this. So there's no point in me discussing all of this. For us, it's what colors you will use, what, how you use the logo, how you use the fonts, and how you use the images, okay? So if you know where to get these images, the right images, and place them in your uh, content, you are good to go. Uh, so now we can have some questions till 8.30. And uh, before I do that, I want, because my mentor is here, 
DTM Wafa Salman. Uh, can you just have a few words from you? We missed you at the beginning. Wafa, are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. I, I'm definitely I'm there. I logged in uh, seven seven minutes late, but I was following and opening my laptop based on what you are giving, and I'm very happy. Uh, first of all, uh, good evening, fellow Toastmasters from all over the world in District 20. It's it's an honor for us to welcome you and host you in this kind of workshop. And branding is a critical uh, workshop as it's important for every club, for every district, and especially for the district director, because they are saving the branding image of Toastmasters. So we need to make sure that we are following the branding. And I think Kajetan with several workshops, it's making it so easy. So even the people who are not the branding expert, they feel that they know how to do the branding. Uh, Kajetan, um, one one comment I will salute you for that is the way you are making the engagement with the audience, uh, with the polls, uh, after and before. Before is to know what they know and after to know that they have listened and they witnessed. So what you are doing is a good thing. Branding is important. We need more, more on the Canva as well as I know that people ask about Canva. I was with you the first uh, webinar. Uh, and I need more about Canva. I do some posters. So you're doing a good job and um, wish all the members benefiting from that and they will follow the YouTube channel. So they will learn even if they did not attend. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good job and back to you. Thank you so much. We will spend uh, eight minutes more on any questions. Uh, chat monitor, do you have something for us? Yes, we have questions, questions. So, one of the question is for corporate club, I believe it's from Bosaid. For corporate clubs, I believe the company's logo should be allowed to appear on our branding materials. Yeah, so again, uh, as a general rule, we are not allowed to use any other logo on the material, but feel free to any specific uh, corporate queries. You should always write to branding at toastmasters.org. They are the best people who will give you the permission because, again, they are not uh, uh, the branding people are quite considerate of the different circumstances and they will give you leverage depending upon the nature of the club and so forth. So to make sure that you officially have the sanction from uh, Toastmasters, write to branding at toastmasters.org, give your samples. They always ask for the samples. What does it look like? How, where will you place it? How close to our logo? And then they will give you the approval directly. Okay, so from our perspective, we say don't use, but if you still insist, then you have to get the permission from branding. Um, okay, Patricia from District 94 says that you should also mention about not placing the colored logo globe on a black background. Yeah, black is, uh, and one thing that you brought up the point about black. If you look at the visual brand guidelines, nowhere you will see black as a background color. You know, it's not that you can't use it. Certainly, it's a palette color, but if you look at the visual representation, you'll never see black being used as the main background color. So it's there mostly for you to write on and maybe sometime to draw some shapes around to make it more attractive from a creative point, but I would avoid using black as a background altogether in the first place. There's a question from Seren, Seren Bid, Area 6, District 79, I think. When we take pictures of club events with club banners, most of the time the logo in the banner is not covered by, rib, is, is 
gets covered by the ribbons or any other objects or the present. Is this allowed? I think this is for Ali Shabazz. Are we talking about a physical banner? The physical banner. Okay, I have no information about physical. My thing is only creating brand content. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't even know. I have never really gone into that part of a physical poster, how it should look, whether the <laughs> ribbon should cover or not cover. Uh, and that's... Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's not in the scope of this. I think Gavala Shashank from uh, District 82 has a... He said, can you open .eps file? He wanted a demo on the .eps files. Ah, okay. It's an Illustrator file. I won't be. Able, I don't have Illustrator on my computer, so I won't be able to work with that file. But graphic designers who work with uh, different software which works with uh, EPS, they will be able to. I am quite happy with PNG. Uh, uh, um, Maram Al Alaradi uh -huh. has a question. The reverse knockout logo is not available in the TMI website. Where can I find it? Good question. Actually, there are some material recently I have also discovered that TI has uh, removed from the website, like the rays. You know, there is a resource called Rays, which I recently acquired from Noor. It used to be on the website, but it's no longer available. And the best answer I can give is right to branding, whether the uh, content is still valid that can be used. If so, they will share it with you. If not, you have to use only what is available in the resources section. Lyndon Marshall has a question. Are there restrictions to where the logo is placed next to the photo or other materials? For example, should it be on the right only or never lower than the photo or so on? So the logo can be placed anywhere as long as you follow the guidelines of keeping space around it. So you can place it at the bottom or the right side or the top side. It really doesn't matter. But it should be prominent. That, uh, Somehow the, the focus should always be that the attention comes to the logo. You can't hide it somewhere. Try to make it prominent. I can take one or two more questions. The rest, okay, of course, I am uh, recording all the chat. I will be answering them in the uh, WhatsApp group for those who are part of my WhatsApp group. And, okay, uh, there, there's one question asked by a couple of uh, members present here. It's about the theme meeting. What about if, if we have a theme meeting, some having people on the promotion flyer, can they have people posted on the promotion flyers? Uh, the for posters? example, for example, in a case of special posters for meetings of any festival, how to select an image without deviating from the guidelines, say a yes. post on Mother's Day. Yeah, so as I said, uh, there will always be exceptions, like Mother's Day is a good example. Fine, on that, that day you know that this is a special occasion, you know you're promoting something uh, very exceptional, uh, nobody is going to come knocking on you. By the way, in the official Toastmaster group, if you go and scroll, you'll find half the Toastmaster, half the posters are not as per the brand guidelines, and those groups are monitored by TI. I mean, there are uh, staff from TI and they never actually, uh, because even sometimes when I put a comment saying, oh, you have tilted the logo, I feel uh, this thing to tell them because they might get offended, you know. So as far as special occasions are concerned, I'm sure you can get away by creating because it's a one-time event or it's it happens rarely, but that should not be the rule. Every poster shouldn't be like that. It's once in a while. Uh, yeah, it should be fine as an exception. Like, as I said, uh, if you want to uh, have celebrate a festival, for example, uh, you have a special meeting to celebrate uh, Christmas, fine, you'll, you'll have a Christmas tree, maybe. That nobody will come knocking on you because you're celebrating, you know. But for normal promotions, you will follow the normal guidelines. Oh, there's a question from Yad, similar question, but this is, can I use from Google or any TMI website or my club? 
can I use a group photo from my club meeting, although it doesn't show engagement or empowerment? As far as possible, try to make your members look engaged and empowered and then use the photo. And the next person who's going to train, my co-trainer, Verna, in fact, she was telling me yesterday, she has, uh, uh, she has made it uh, her priority as uh, she is the incoming division director, that she has asked one of her friend, photographer, to create these images so she can use them throughout the year. And that's the thing you should do when you ask, take some images, even if you have to simulate them, ask them to sit in a position that shows your background, your lectern, and create those photos, because those are the photos you should really promote and encourage. One, okay, so uh, now we are running out of time because I have to hand over to Verna. There will be another Q&A session after uh, her session. So please wait, uh, we will address some more questions. But now let me introduce my next uh, co-trainer, Toastmaster Verna, Verna Bonabi. Bonabi. He's all the way from uh, Bahamas, my, my favorite place. And wow. Uh, and she has something very interesting to share with you. But before that, I just want to introduce, she is an incoming division director, like me. I'm also incoming division director. And like me, both of us will become DTMs next month. So with that, over to you, Van. Thank you so very much, Kajitan. I won't say, let me say good afternoon and good evening to everyone in the group. After that cake that Kajitan has served, I am just a tall glass of cool water to wash it all down this afternoon. A quick presentation, and I call it Canva, to pro or not to pro. Uh, Kajitan, will I be able to share my screen? Yes, you should be able to. Okay. Yes. I can share. So. To pro or not to pro. Now, I know by now, a lot of you, especially those of us who've been in the WhatsApp group and trying out Canva, have realized that many of Canva's functions in the free version, are some of the same ones available in the pro version. And we can create all of the things that we need in the free version. So why would we even need Canva Pro? For some of us, it really just depends on whether or not we, yes, whether or not we want to use some of the premium functions offered. What are some of the differences between the free version of Canva and Canva Pro? In the free version, we have free templates, logos, about a thousand plus fonts, photos, and graphics. 8,000 free templates. And as Canva says, there are hundreds of thousands of free photos and graphics. That is a whole lot of free stuff. There's only one brand approved font, Montserrat, as Kajitan would have told us earlier. So for anything else, for the other fonts, we must use similar look fonts. Now, each time we have to type in the color codes when we want to use the brand colors. There are limited folders that we get to use to save our designs. So if you are designing for several different clubs, everything that you create has to be lumped into one single folder. Now, if we compare that free version, the pro version, I noticed something else I added down here. There is no resizing of files in the free version. But in the pro version, we 
free templates, logos, fonts, photos, and graphics. But look at the numbers, 8,000 versus 50,000. Approximately 60 million, they claim, premium stock images, photos, videos, and graphics. In the pro version, you are able to upload your own fonts and logos. In the pro version, you're also able to create a brand kit. So we can put in the Toastmasters colors and it's just a matter of click of a button. There's no longer the need to type in those color codes. What happens if you misplace that paper? You also have unlimited folders to save your designs. So as an area director, if you have five or six clubs, you can create a folder for each of those clubs and you can save your designs there. There's also a feature they call one-click custom design resize. If you create an eight and a half by 11 folder, I mean, sorry, flyer for Facebook, with one click, you can resize it down to Instagram which is smaller, one simple click, which is not allowed in the free version. In the pro version, you can also create custom templates. So some of those lovely flyers that you have been creating in the WhatsApp group, we can go behind and save them as a custom template and it goes into that pool. So if somebody else comes behind, they can find it right there as a template. No need to try and recreate it. They can find it there as a template. A cute little feature also available in the free version. You can save a design. You can create a design with multiple pages and you are able to export that design as an animated GIF or an MP4 video. I did one for Mother's Day, a little two-pager, added my photo and sent it out. And it was a nice little video to say in Happy Mother's Day, very animated. And you can publish the social media pages. Now I looked at the free version as well, and they also offer that, but it's more detailed. So you can publish to your social media pages. Now, major difference is the free version. It's free for life. The pro version, $9.95 per user monthly or $120 if you pay for it annually. If you choose to pay for it per month, it's $12.95 per month. Now, something that I noticed, in the free version, it gives you an option, and I realized it after I had done this, but I went and I looked, it gives you an option to add persons to your teams. And you can put in their email address and send that out, invite out to those persons. In the paid version, the very same option, it's $9.95 per month for each additional team member. And I remember saying, wow, that's almost the same cost of the original program. So that can get very expensive. One thing, if you really want to use it, if it's for an area and if the clubs would like to use it, they can pool their resources together and you can utilize a sign-in that is shared between the public relations persons and everybody then has the opportunity to create their flyers. Otherwise, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the free version. Now, when it came to some of the fonts, you may be able to get free fonts. There are some websites, and I will pull one of them up 
quickly, if you search, let me see, share, share. And they go here. Now, if you notice, I typed free Gotham font and it would bring up a number of websites. Here you ask, is Gotham a free font? Because you're able to check. And it says you can download this font right here for free and you can use it in your designs. It's free if it's only for your personal usage. But if you're going to sell your designs or want to use it for commercial purposes, then we recommend you to buy the font. But as in our Toastmasters, we're not selling our designs or our flyers. So once you're able to search, and if you have confirmation that you can utilize it for your personal usage and not commercial, then you will be able to download and use that font. Now we go here into Canva and let's look at a couple of the things that we talked about in the pro version. This is my, I'm already logged in and you've all become familiar with this. I am here. So all of my designs, first tab. And if I just look, you will see the colors and everything flying along. This is where we come, what I fell in love with, the brand kit. And if you will notice here, you see all of my Toastmasters logos, which I downloaded from the resources section of the Toastmasters website. So I am sure these are the correct ones. So the grayscale, the black, these are all of them. And here is my brand, my color palette. And let's try, let's add a new palette. And it's untitled, let's call it TI test and we name it. So plus, and if you notice, there are the numbers down below. Now Kajitan has already provided us with those numbers. So if I were to say here and let's add the maroon, I would type in seven, seven, two, four, three, two. And there is my maroon. And then I would, again, let's try the yellow. And the yellow is simply F, two, D, F, seven, four. And that's my yellow. And that is so on, I would add the other colors. And have you noticed on the side here, and it says brand fonts, headings, I was able to, I searched for the brand fonts and I was able to find the versions that you were able to use. So here, and you're able to go in. And so I set to say for my headings, Gotham, bold. So whenever I create a new document, I don't have to look at that visual um, guideline to say, oh, which font should I use for the heading? Or what font should I use for the subheading? And what should I use for the body? If you notice, I've set them here already. My headings, Gotham. Subheadings, that. Myriad Pro. And these shows the fonts that I uploaded. So if you come down here, upload a font and I did a little Canva workshop. And so what I did is here would have been the fonts. I created a little folder so as not to get them lost. And let's see, Myriad Pro Black. And it would show me the font there and open. Please confirm. By uploading my own custom font, I acknowledge that I own that or have the rights to use it. So here is why I say it's important that once we find a font and the site where we find it, it says that it is free for us to use for personal use and not commercial, then it's okay to say yes, upload anyway.
and it is uploading the file. Because the default is just the regular version and not the Myriad. So it added the Myriad Pro, Pro Black here. And here, where it says to create a team, well, they tell you quite specifically when you add it to each new will cost. So that doesn't make any sense. All your folders, this will show these would have been the folders. You're only allowed to create one folder in the free version. But in here, this is my credit union. This is my template designs. This is a folder I did say Canva presentation. And that's for PHA items. And by the way, that presentation, that short PowerPoint that I did, I actually created that here in Canva. And I downloaded it. I downloaded it as an empty for a little video, testing it out. I downloaded it as a PowerPoint presentation. So I didn't create that in PowerPoint. I created that right here in Canva. And then I downloaded it as a PowerPoint presentation. And it, it converted with no problem. And this is our the uploads folder. And let's not say I have a whole lot of stuff in my uploads folder. But if I come here now, and I go to templates and I decide that I want an Instagram post. And say, for example, this is one here that is already colors. Let's use this template. So it came with its own colors. So I want to quickly, once you select here, we see the little color here. So when I select, when I press that, you notice because I would have created my Toastmasters International palette, I just go there and I select the color and it changes to the Toastmasters brand color. And I come to this side and then I select the blue. And then I come here and I select gray. Each one of these as I select, it highlights, it shows the color. And let's say we can go and that is just white. And you notice I'm changing and the colors are slowly changing to look like the Toastmasters branded colors. And here. And there we have something that is now shaping up. And if I take this pencil out because we cannot use that, and then I go to click to my uploads and somewhere amongst the many uploads, I have Toastmasters International. And I move it up here and above there. Or I can put it on the side, as Kajidan says, I can put it to the bottom just as long as it's visible and promise and we know that we're all about that. So that is an Instagram. Now, if I decided that, hmm, I want to save it, I can rename it right here, TI Colors Instagram Post. And I file, save the folder, and I will save it to my Canva presentation folder and save it. And I go here into resize. And I said, let's save this now for a Facebook video. I want my original one so I can copy it and resize it. And you notice it changed over here, it says download video. And if you were to download, it would download it in a video format for you. That is also something that is nice in the pro version. Let me see. Custom templates. Let's see if we can find where to save that. When you share, Kajitan, I will send you a file later because I want to see if something that I create using some of the features in the pro version, if I send it to you using the free version, if you'll be able to actually to access, I want to, I want to try that out. So I will send you, but those are just a few of the features 
that is available in the pro version. And remember now, this is not, it's not only for Toastmasters, for those of you who may have other jobs that may require graphics. I noticed something when I went here into brand kit and I uploaded, when you upload a logo, I saw a feature where it allowed you to create a, your brand, your colors by just selecting the logo. Yeah, and I don't, I don't remember where I found that, but it had a feature where it allowed you to, when you selected the logo, you were able to create a palette. It, it's, it actually picked up the color. It picked up the colors. And I was like, wow, that is very interesting. But again, it's the, the cost, the cost of it. What can be a little expensive if we are all, of course, we are a nonprofit organization and our clubs have small budgets, so that would get expensive for a lot of us. But I, one of the points I wanted to say for those of you who may have clicked onto the pro version when you went in to try it, be very mindful of the time frame because I guarantee you, if you do not unsubscribe before that trial period ends it will charge you and it will charge you it won't give you the option of coming in and charging you the monthly rate it will charge your card the full 120 dollars and i'm speaking from experience telling you that because i went in and i looked at it i said let me try and look at the pro version and busy doing other things dealing with work and COVID, and forgot about the trial and when i looked i got a notification your card has been charged 120 dollars, and i'm like wow so it's paid for for the year so i must utilize it but that is just some of the features in canva and like kajadan said earlier and he would have given us all of the fundamentals so any software you use, whether it's Photoshop or it's Canva or it's PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, once you have those basic fundamentals down pat, and we can use the colors, recognize the fonts, we are all on our way to becoming brand ambassadors. And I thank you, Kajitan, for this opportunity. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. I don't know how many sales you have made for <laughs> Canva through right now. <laughs> I'm certainly considering it. In fact, I was a I was, uh, long time wondering whether I should go that route because I don't create as much brand content as it would justify paying $10 every month. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm becoming a division director, it certainly yeah. seems to make sense to me. So I will definitely consider it. And the beauty of it, what you have shown is everything is in one place. One time you upload mm -hmm. the fonts, one time you set the pa brand palette. And mm -hmm. then it becomes a click, 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 and you're up and running. Of course, those of us who can't afford, we are clubs, we can't afford mm -hmm. to pay $10. Obviously, it's a matter of just relying on simple yes. things like this yes. or creating your own card like this. And it, it achieves the same result. In, you might spend five minutes more on every poster, and mm -hmm. that might be fine for you to just stay by that cost unless you're doing it every day, then you might say, oh, I could save so much by just paying $10. So this is something to be considered. Definitely, if you're doing a lot of work, then what Verna has shown us is amazing to use. I would definitely. Now we have some time, six minutes to take some questions. Our yes, chat monitor you. will ask us yes. a question. Yeah, we have a question from uh, uh, DTM Mohammed Salim. Can we use any color, any design for a our Toastmasters meeting if we are not using Toastmasters logo? Very interesting question. And this is the first thing that was uh, that uh, I first encountered uh, several years, not several, just uh, maybe two years ago, because I'm only two and a half years in Toastmasters. And this uh, creative, uh, he's a creative guy. He told me, see, I will do whatever I want. As long as I don't put the Toastmaster logo, I'm fine. But that's not right. That's not correct picture because as long as you're 
uh, promoting a Toastmaster activity, okay, you're promoting Toastmasters, the branding, first of all, you should by default put the logo because why, what else are you promoting? You're promoting Toastmaster, a uniform culture or uniform system of education and leadership across the world. You don't want to be the one who stands out of the crowd because when a member joins your club, why do you want to be different? You need to provide that consistent learning to the member. So whether you put the logo or no, the answer is you must stick to the branding guidelines. Otherwise, you're not promoting Toastmasters. You're promoting something else. Um, most of them, the, uh, another repeat question about using children's pictures in a poster uh, yeah. for children's if there was a meeting regarding children's rights. Yes. Again, as I said, uh, Toastmaster is very clear on such things like children not to be shown uh, at least as a picture on the, on the poster. And I would highly recommend we follow that. As I said, there are some exceptions on certain things like festivals and all that. But let's stay away from things that are clearly forbidden for us to use uh, to promote the branding, the brand guidelines. And Verna can, uh, can maybe, my co-trainer can just, because she is very passionate about branding. So Verna, can you chip in? <laughs> You're muted. Yes, I, I, I had to learn. I, I had to learn because I was one of those persons when we, like in the Bahamas, we love our themes. And we usually, when we do our flyers, if we're, starting day one you have the picture of the road and all of that and i think when i went to i started to read the visual guidelines and i said okay we have to make some adjustments and my very first deck meeting when they really started to talk about it and said and you really talk about brands and how the logo should nothing else should compete with it and stuff like i was like okay and so i really really started to read and, and got more into it and we we have to get an, an appreciation of it and we can still be very creative and we're just using those five colors and some of those persons who were here for the first time they missed your first one when you said that the five colors had to have been chosen by a man because <laughs> women look women look at colors very differently and but it is a whole lot that we can do with just the the five colors and and get creative without it being i've seen some amazing designs just using the the five colors so we're gonna yeah. we're gonna do some more of this Yes. Any more questions? Um, some of them have been answered while you conducted the workshop. So Fantastic. unless they need to be addressed again. OK, so we are only two minutes away from the end of the workshop. Uh, so formally, I will, uh, first of all, thank all the participants who came from all over the globe. and. Uh, the recording is available on the YouTube. And if you look at the screen itself, there is something called live on custom live streaming service. You will see this on the top. And if you click on that arrow, you'll get the link to the video recording. You can uh, go through it at, a, at your own leisure, uh, review the contents. But I can assure you that this four basic pillars of our branding, which is the colors, the logo, the fonts, and the images if you combine them right you in know in, you can put them in any order that you want but you mix them up correctly this box that you have been given to use you can create amazing content and i've seen that example of amazing content in the uh, whatsapp group that we were sharing so go out there and uh, for those who want the certificate of completion please fill up the form that I have shared in the WhatsApp group and make sure that you have attempted to create a poster with this branding guidelines in mind. That's so an that interesting it... question. Yeah. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, just a second. Is it wrong to increase the transparency of a color in on the flyers while using TI brand colors? Well, I, I wouldn't uh, go to say yes or no in this case. It all depends on case-by-case case basis. Some creatives do it. Toastmasters themselves do it in their magazines and so forth. They use transparency. 
But if you are creating any content, which is mostly what we were discussing about creating posters and all that, I would recommend to stick to the basics. As you become more and more proficient, you can play around, but always go right to branding.toastmasters.org. Ask them specific questions on when you want to push the boundaries, because I don't want to be the one to tell you yes or no, because there is a team there who are experts who are protecting the brand. They would be the right persons to answer that question to you. Uh, but if you follow whatever is there in the guidelines, then I will say yes or no. The re rest, you have to approach uh, in a different way from a creative perspective. Can we take one more question? Yeah. One. Can we use free stock images from Shuttershock, Pixel, etc.? If the no. chosen images are <laughs> yeah. engaging... This was my, my previous... Uh, <laughs> I had covered this in my previous section. You have to be very careful what images that you download. And uh, Verna has mentioned it in the fonts also. Always look for the licensing of the image or the font. It must say that you are allowed to use it. If you go to Google and search for any images, it will always say sub images may be subject to copyright, which means if you download it without looking at the copyright of that image, you are subject to be uh, from a legal perspective because you're using copyrighted material. And everything from Shutterstock, by the way, unless you pay for it, is not available for you for free. Some of the uh, resources that you can use, and I'll quickly highlight to you, which uh, Verna has mentioned, but I want to just show that to you. Uh, hope you can see it. Yes. Is in Canva itself, okay? If you go in the more, and uh, if you look at those resources that are already available, these are all free, by the way. You can use this. And if you go for the pro version, as she said, you can get maybe uh, hundreds of thousands of free images. This you can use. What is available in uh, Canva? Yes, you can use directly because they are part of the bundle for you. If they are to be paid, it will then tell you whether it's free or not. So this is free. You are free to use it. But in Google, be careful of what you download, whether it has a license or not. Uh, one more question, not related to Canva, or I mean, sorry, uh, TI branding, but very inter uh, interesting question. It is by Vaishant Bafna. I was very fascinated by the video presentation of TTM Kajitin. TTM. If I may ask, can I please know which application has been used by him to show the presentation as well as the video to be played simultaneously? Yes. It, it and this question cool, has been it? asked by Nico Johnson as well. It does look cool, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, let me just quickly answer that question. What I'm using is actually I, I was using a paid software, but recently I found a free version of it and you can see my picture. So whatever page I go to on the back, you will automatically see it changing in the, my screen. And the way I'm doing that is, uh, and in fact, I can make myself, as I uh, shown you, I can apply a filter to make myself uh, different. I can move myself around okay anywhere i want i have a nice clock that will that i can use to keep track of the time and that's what i did i could make it bigger so these components are all done using a free software called obs open broadcast software uh, obs and it comes with a companion plugin called obs webcam uh, you need to be fairly uh, tech savvy to play around with it because it can be daunting uh, for a non-tech savvy person but if you're in IT go to OBS studio Google download the software and then download the OBS webcam and you can do all of this for free everything and with that we are a little over our time and I will end the session formally let me go to YouTube and end the stream and uh, stop the recording and any questions